Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch clips from Big Bang Theory Season 4 to see how accurate all the science technology in the season really are. I am a mobile virtual presence device. Recent events have demonstrated to me that my body is too fragile to endure the vicissitudes of the world. <laughs> Until such time as I am able to transfer my consciousness, I shall remain in a secure location and interact with the world in this manner. Even if you're virtual everywhere, you still need to physically move around or your muscles will atrophy. Now, this is insanity. I really hope that the human race doesn't come to this. Excuse me, Mr. Wozniak? Oh, hey. Nice virtual presence device. Thank you. I just want to say I'm a big fan. You're my 15th favorite technological visionary. Only 15th? It's still six spots above Steve Jobs. <laughs> super cool that they actually got him as a cameo. I hope a lot of people know about this guy, but Steve Wozniak was the very first Apple engineer. Steve Jobs knew about user interface and he was a thinker and a dreamer. Steve Wozniak was the actual engineer who built the early Apple computers. Now this guy was expelled from the University of Colorado because he hacked into the university computer system just for fun. He was a hardware engineer who started at Hewlett Packard or HP before founding Apple in 1975 with Steve Jobs. Without Steve Wozniak, we probably wouldn't have personal computing at the rate we do right now. Perhaps, maybe, someday, sort of whatever. Somebody else could have figured it out, but they didn't, it was him. <laughs> Ta-da! What? Ta-da. It's short for da-da-da-da. Kind of busy here, Sheldon. I know, that's why I shortened it. What do you want? Now, this would not be possible in an actual lab environment because you are not allowed to prop that door open for a multitude of reasons, primarily security and other safety, insurance, my gosh. Especially when you're using a potentially blinding laser? Imagine that thing accidentally reflecting off the wrong surfaces and ending up flying down the hallway into somebody's eyes or something like that. Sheldon would also need safety glasses. This is just not a good look. Not to mention all the warning signs everywhere. A red laser is produced by helium or helium neon. It's a very common gas laser. Uh, it can also be green depending on the user and how they affect the wavelength. Carbon dioxide lasers release light in the infrared and microwave regions of the wavelength spectrum, which will melt steel over time. Those are pretty intense. You need a lot of security and a lot of safety precautions before handling something like that. I made it onto the team for the new Defense Department laser-equipped surveillance satellite. Congratulations, Howard. Thanks. Listen, I have to get a security clearance so you guys might be hearing from the FBI. Th th this is very, very common, and by common I mean my gosh, like all the time. Whenever you're working on government projects, there's a lot of background checks that go into place, and more than likely, whoever you write down as a potential uh, like recommendation or previous employers or even friends and family, they will be contacted by phone. What's not gonna happen is an extremely attractive FBI agent will show up at your door and then ask you questions about Howard Wallowitz. I mean, not knocking him, but He's not that high up there. There's probably some people that have to go through this background process, but engineers are generally not. I mean, I've received phone calls from enough people just to be like, hey, do you recommend this person for a job like this? How are they with time management? How are they with working with other people? How are they with secrecy and privacy? But the, in, in general, I have never heard of anyone actually being approached at their door. Good evening. I'm your guest lecturer, Dr. Sheldon Cooper. I agreed to speak to you this evening because I was told that you're the best and the brightest of this university's doctoral candidates. Who here is familiar with the concept of topological insulators? <laughs> Don't kid yourselves. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, man, this is something that's shown up quite a bit on the channel and man, like they, this show displays it so perfectly. The professors that are teaching you STEM, anything to do with math, engineering, science, they do not care about their students. They're, okay, there's probably gonna be a select few, like maybe like two in the United States, 
but the vast majority, they do not want to teach you. They don't care if you learn. These professors are only there to teach at the university because they want to do research that they don't have the money for these giant lasers and high-tech machines and like pressure devices and things like that and these supercomputers. But the university does and those resources are being allocated for research. Now, in order for the professors to conduct that research, they have to agree to teach a class. Depending on the professor and how published they are, or if they're in a newspaper or something prolific like that, like everyone has heard about them, that attracts a lot more grant money to the university and students are much more likely to attend that university. You will learn so much more about the actual class and the material being taught from the teaching assistants during recitation or office hours, if they care about you enough to answer your questions. But in general, it's kind of sad to say this, but from my personal experience as well as my friends who attended other universities, and this might not be true for other professors, but specifically for STEM and engineering especially, do not take an engineering class expecting the professor to teach. That's a long shot. <laughs> You're going to learn a lot of it yourself, a lot of it with friends. Get a lot of material together. Ask your senior classmates who took the class before, like, what does this actually mean? What's the science behind it? How does it work? Because unfortunately, professors are pretty useless when it comes to teaching and educating. Priya, you're a lawyer, right? I know, pretty boring, huh? Oh, come on, it's not boring at all. Uh, she's currently helping set up a secondary derivative market, which would allow overseas car firms to hedge their investments against potential advancements in battery technology. Hmm? No, that's... That's not actually a good, well, I guess, I mean, depends on how you define good here, but what what she's actually doing, it means that she's setting up foreign markets to bet against Tesla because they're against like battery technology, which is going to go in electric cars. But that's what it means to hedge against something. It means like you are betting it fails. I wonder how that worked out for them. Coronary problems are eminently treatable. What's more likely going to kill Howard's mother are the antibiotic-resistant superbugs festering in every nook and cranny of this hospital. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, boy. Well, that is kind of true. If you look at hand sanitizer, for example, it'll say that it cleans 99.99% of all the germs and bacteria and uh, the myth is that the 0.01% are immune to the hand sanitizer. This is not actually true. What's more likely the reason for this is that it's a man-made product. We are imperfect people taking imperfect measurements to create imperfect products, and then those are beta tested around the world with people who are all different. I mean, to, to say that you can make a product that is 100% of anything, is not possible because humans are not perfect, so we can never make anything perfect. This is not our fault, it's just every step of the design process, you're adding a little bit more uncertainty. So you wanna limit that so you have the most consistent product possible. It's just, this, this is really, really hard. <laughs> Even when an assembly line is mostly robots, humans designed and made the parts that went into that robot. There's no way of actually going around this. So even AI, when it's fully developed, it's made by people, which means it will not be perfect. Do the information as you will. 